Hello, Charlie TCG here, and welcome back to Looking Ahead, the series where I break down and analyze the meta of what's happening over Japan and how it'll impact R1. In today, I'm talking all things Dust Clops and Dust Noir and how I think it's going to be the biggest threat going into the World Championships. Now, Japan are coming to the end of a Shroud of Fables format before they get their brand new set at the end of this week. So a better place to look at the different archetypes really shown in the Shroud of Fables format, which have utilised the Dust Noir line to the best effect. Obviously, you know, we like the Dragapult and Charizard, which are definitely the best sort of users for, with this, but also some other decks like Palkia, Golden Go, and even Lost Box really utilise them to the best ability. Uh, plus, we've got to break down the brand new and the rest of the new cards from the latest set and what impact it could really have on the meta game. So let's get cracking and start looking at them. So we had the last EX which got revealed, which is Medicham EX, and I really like its first attack. Put um, damage counters on your opponent's active Pokemon to your remaining HP is 50. Now, if this isn't screaming for a partner with um, the likes of Dusclops or even Sableye, I don't know what is. Yes, obviously it has to get down to 50, it's never knocking out, but I think it's all pretty good. You can use this attack on multiple different EXs um, and then pretty much clean up the likes of Dusclops or even the likes of Sableye in the end game, which I think is pretty nice. The second attack does 190 damage and is affected by weakness or resistance, which is fine, but I wouldn't say it's as strong. Marak, however, I really like as a single prize attacking option with this second attack, Bone Revenge. 60 damage, and if any of your bench cubones have any damage counters on us, it's 120 more. Now let's remember the um, 151 cubone, which has 30 more damage for your Marowaks. I really, really like this um, because you can have, effectively, if you have a whole bunch of Cubones with that ability, it does stack to an additional 90 more damage to the additional 120 more damage. That's 270 damage as Marowak can kind of have to offer, which I think is very, very powerful. Yes, obviously you have the likes of um, DTE, so it'd be like 100 and 250. So effectively, this Marowak could be a really fun single price attacking deck. Could be very costly, but with likes of Night Stretcher and the likes of Lana as well. Lance assistant, it could generally be there. Now we finally had the berries kind of return to the TCG, and both of them have the same effect. The papaya one reduces 60, uh, uh, sorry, psychic damages by 60, and the okara one does fire one by 60. Now, effectively, this is a good sort of counter for likes of Charizard and likes of Gardevoir. Yes, you kind of go, but Charizard is dark type, but it does stop the likes of Radiant Charizard sweeping in to get some clean knockouts in the end. But the papaya does stop down the likes of Screamtail and Drifloo. Could DC play? Potentially, but in a format where nearly Jamming Tower or Lost Vacuum is nearly every other deck, I generally don't think they will see as play, but maybe when these cards sort of be a little bit less play, we could see these kind of like have some fun impact to the meta. Now, let's look at some different archetypes really utilize um, the likes of a Dustin War line to the best effect. Well, better place to look than Charizard, which is definitely the poster boy for Dustin War, and I'm very, very excited to be talking about it in a few days' time in my latest mastering video. So I really hope you guys enjoy this. So, why is Dust Clops and Dust played in the likes of Charizard? Well, there's a few things. Number one, it helps fuel Charizard's attack by you knocking out your Dust Clops and Dust Noir. So, you're already doing an additional 30 more damage for, with your Charizard's um, base attack. Plus, we also get to put some damage counters on there. Five damage counters KO the likes of Pidgeys. So, people are switching to likes of the 60 HP Pidgeys, but this one here, they still really value that cool family for the 51. So, it can be a bit punishing at the time. Or you can put it on the opponent's active Pokemon. You also get to activate the likes of um, Defiance Band so or Counter Catcher, so instantly going behind in prizes. So that's something which is very, very good, especially when you go second. Sorry, yeah, when you go second on your first turn of, on a second turn of the game. So instantly, that's a very, very powerful one. And you could do additional 290 damage to the opponent's active Pokemon just with a Defiance Band on and the five damage counters on and the active Pokemon. So that's already very, very strong. And I'm a huge fan about where, how this Charizard is kind of doing these big sort of damage counters. Now, obviously, you have the likes of the uh, Radiant Charizard, which is a really good clean sweeper. Dust Noir is pretty good because they can care of likes of Bibbrel or even just help set up and get rid of likes of Mimikyu. Now, playing the likes of a Super Rod and a 2-1-1 line is very, very powerful because you can constantly utilize them. Effectively, you could get multiple guys of these out. Now, obviously, you've got to be careful because you don't want to give your opponent the game by just knocking out your guys all the time. So it's something to be a bit more careful about. You only maybe got to get two, maybe three of these out always, but they're so good to help fix out the math. Potentially, you can take multiple turns, even against um, Gardevoir. You can effectively have a full prize turn with Lost Vacuum, um, Dust Noir, as well as also the Charizard and Gus KO. So generally, there is a huge thing about why this is so powerful. It just makes so much more sense. It fixes all your math in Charizard, and that's why I think it's so powerful. The one thing Charizard players should definitely start thinking about is going back to the 60 HP Pidgey. I know we've really loved our call for family, but 
I also do not like getting KO'd easily from the likes of a Dusclops, especially going in the mirror match when this is effectively, I feel like it's going to be a 30 to 40% archetype at the World Championships. So definitely the best utilization of the Dust Noir line. Another one which has seen some success is Dragapult. Now, Dragapult is definitely a deck which has played a lot more over in Japan than it is for us, but there is still quite a few good things going for this one. What I like about this with the Dusclops and Dust Noir is it really helps the Dragapult's math fixing. You're always doing 200 damage and the 60 spread um, which i think is also very very strong but having like some dust clocks and dust noir you can get those additional more um prizes you can potentially get that big setup for the likes of a tm devo place taking multiple turns multiple prizes in that turn so it does help fix that sort of mass here we can see they've also played the likes of um, night stretcher and super Roy to potentially reutilize them as well now, as you are going to be really focusing on getting your Dragapult set up, getting your pitcher, you're not, sometimes not always going to be getting that rare candy out. Though Dra a Dragapult does have that amazing Dra cloak, and you need to play the TM Devo, so you have good ways around this one, instead of not using the likes of a rare candy. Heck, even um, TM Devo, um, Evo on the early turns to get a Dust Clops, and then go to Dust Noir turn two, is very, very powerful, and especially with Super Rod, you can utilize them again. So definitely something to be a bit more considerate about, really help fix some damage counters, and also helps with your MTM Devo plays in the late game. Definitely something to be a bit considerate about for how strong it could be in the likes of Dragapult. Now, this is this Lost Box deck. Now, if you can remember, um, Andrew Mahone did a video about this last week and kind of showed how powerful it can be. It's definitely one of these um, big sort of, um, as soon as you play this one, get loads of damage count, um, dust clubs in the discard pile, discard pile, lost zone, and then you have these huge damage capabilities spread with likes of Saberlight. Now, there is a few things going one and something you notice. Number one, this is a very big A speed deck. Carmine and the likes of um, Squawkabilly is really played this one. There's no chorus as well. So you're kind of like going this, trying to get turn um, two, three or even four dust clops, spread loads of damage counter to this one, check them all in for loss um, zone with Lost City, and then also try and like clean up with the likes of a Sableye to potentially take multiple prizes that way. Now, but there's a few good things go with this one. Number one, against a lot of evolution decks, likes of Gardevoir and the likes of um, Charizard, they have not that much HP, so they can easily win in that one. But against likes of a Raging Bolt or effectively a fully evolved um, Charizard board, it's very difficult for you to kind of like clean sweep. That's why you have the likes of Blood and Earth's Luna. But with having no copies of um, Mirage Step, uh, Marsh Gate, or even any way to really energy accelerate to Earth's Luna, you effectively have to, your opponent has to take four prizes for us to really kind of like be attacking with this one. So there is some things going with this one. Do I think this could be a secret deck for Worlds? I think it's a fun deck, but I think there is a lot of stuff going for this one. I think it's really good against the um, really small um, basic cards, like the likes of the Charmanders and the Pidgeys and stuff like that. But it could be very much a big struggle against the big EXs for the likes of Lugia and the likes of Raging Bowl. So definitely something to be considered, but I think it's a very, very fun deck. Nevertheless, kind of being a big um, turbo um, Lost Zone deck with not playing any choruses. So definitely something to really consider. Another one is Palkia, and Palkia, I think, is a quite a fun inclusion. It does play a 4-2-3 line of Dust Noir. So really kind of capitalizing using the Dust Noir as your main rare candy guards of choice. Why does this so help you with your Palkia? Well, whenever you see a big Palkia deck, no one's ever going to really overextend their bench. Palkia's damage only really caps out at 260 damage. So having this Dust Noir pretty much effectively makes it have a base damage of 390 if everything is absolutely full, which I think is pretty good. One thing you also got to notice, even though, yes, you um, put some damage counters on the opponent's guys, you do effectively lose 20 damage because you're losing a bench stock, so you always have to get that filled up. There are multiple ways to kind of utilize this one. We're seeing four copies of Night Stretcher and one copy of Super Rod. So we're seeing multiple ways to try and like get back your Dust Clops and Dust Noir. So I am a big, big fan of this style of deck. I think this is quite a fun way to play Palkia. When I saw this, I went, oh, I could really see this one. You could really utilize the likes of an Iron Bundle or Counter Catcher, especially with the likes of a Dust Clops and Dust Noir. Having such a high one of these ones here, you could effectively carry Radiant Greninja or even likes of Bibrols and Shen Pao matchups. You could helpfully, um, effectively use knock out two of these guys to KO with like some Pheasantipity or Luminion on the bench. As we know, knocking out one Dust Clops and a Dust Noir does do uh, put 17 damage counters on any, oh, sorry, 18 damage counters. Um, um, on one of your opponent's Pokemon. So that's a pretty good sort of math fix fixer as well. Effectively just getting a free um, two-price Pokemon on the bench, like Mew or Luminion. 
I think this could be a fun way to play Palkia. It's a very thin line being 2-2. Two -two. I effectively would like a pretty much a 3-3. Three -three. Just here, always going to be using them as attackers. But effectively, if you are using likes of Dust Cuts and Dust Noir, you're not going to be attacking as much. And Blood Nurse Luna could actually be a very good attacker in the late game as well. Definitely something to be considered about and a very, very fun way to utilize one of the strongest cards in the game. Speaking of this one, why not play a different version of Palkia, Golden Go, which has a 1-1-1 line of Dust Noir. Now, I mentioned this, I believe, last week, but I think it had likes of Darkrai in it. So, how exactly is this a good way to play um, Golden Go? Well, effectively, if you use one um, Dust Clops, you effectively need one less energy to KOV your opponent's active Pokemon. Or if you play a Dust Noir, that's two and a half energies. You can finally get to the three bits you might need to have. Lots of people have like 230 HP or 330. Effectively, you need three less energy to cave likes of a Charizard. So that's very, very powerful. Even likes of a Dragapult as well. So it really helps fix that sort of math fix as well. What I really like about the Hyper the hyper Aroma, not only do you get your Golden Ghost, you also get your likes of a um, um, Dusclop. So effectively, it's a very good way to utilize any of these guys. Having that one rare candy means you can effectively, with Super Rod, shuffle it back in and have the um, dust clop, have, use one dust clops and then one dust noir as well. I really like this good mass fixer. You can easily search most of these stuff with likes of the Irida to get the key item cards you might really require. And it does help with that mass fixer for Golden Go. Plus, if you want to attack with the likes of a Palkia, it goes through that. It helps with that as well. And it also helps the likes of Mimikyu as well by KOing the Mimikyu so you can keep attacking with your big um, EX and Rollbox Pokemon. So definitely something to be a little bit more considerate about. Could this be the best way to play Golden Go? I would say yes, because we've seen it quite a lot and uh, and it has had quite a bit of success. So generally, this could be a fun way to play Golden Go EX into the new format. Another one is Greninja. Now, Greninja is a deck which I have kind of had a weird relationship with. I've seen it kind of do success, but it hasn't done as well as many people want. And I've even done some fun testing against it. And Dust Clops could, and Dust Noir could be an interesting inclusion for um, Greninja. Now, the one thing going with Greninja, it teamed up with Frostlass and people went, this is probably the best way to play Greninja with lots of spreading sort of um, your damage, um, damage around the board. You can use Monkey Dory to move it around and then they can really effectively make the damage a lot higher. Obviously, there's 170 damage. Search your deck for any card. And then you've got the, um, effectively, because you're always going to have a DTE attached to this one, um, 100 damage sniped to two of your opponent's Pokemon. Now, this is pretty powerful. Yes, we have Manaphy in the game, but what about, instead of using the Cancelling Clone play, what if we just play Dust Noir and then KO the Manaphy, and then you can put the 110 damage count, uh, the, te the 100 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon anyway, that sort of way. That could work. You're already playing Rare Candy, so why not play a high count of a Dusk Noir line? So it generally is a good way to kind of go around this one. Now, the only issue with this deck, I can see a 3-1-3 line of Greninja, a 2-0-2 line of Pidgeot, and a 2-1-2 line of Dusk Noir, and only four Rare Candies. That is a big sort of struggle when you've got effectively um, seven stage three Pokemon for only four rare candies and a very thin line of everything else. So effectively, you're going to be a much slower sort of route here and not be using the rare candies on your Dust Noir as much as possible. Could I generally see this be a good way to play Greninja? Potentially, but it seems very, very costly as you're already going to be running a lot of rare candies. You could say the same thing. Yes, but Charlie, we play that. And then Charizard, there's a 4-2 um, a, like there's a four two light, four two three line of Charizard I normally play. So you have a high count of Charmeleon, so you don't need to utilize your red candies as much. And you also play a 202 line of Pidgeot to search out your stuff as well. So effectively, you're going to be utilizing um, your red candies a lot less. So something to be really considerate about. Yes, you are playing the TM Devo play. So effectively, with the lots of spread damage counters, you're going to be taking a huge big prize turn, especially with the 100 damage from the Greninjas. So something to be considerate about. This could be a fun way to play Greninja, but I'm not really sold on this one. Overall, it seems very, very costly for a deck which already requires a lot of a combo. Another one is Meowskarada, a deck which I generally um, keep on forgetting actually is still in the format. And I generally think the Dust Noir does help uh, Mas Masquerada a lot. So we're playing it with the likes of the Bibberall, but also the Dust Noir and the Radiant Alakazam. I really like the help for the damage. Now, as we know, a Meowth Grad is 100 damage and 100 more if your opponent's actual Pokemon has damage counters on. It has the ability which to discard um, Grass Energy, put some damage counters, plus you now have the Dust Clops and Dust Noir. You can now finally get to the big one hit KO potential. What I really like is the upper new energy does help. You can hack this one and not having that reduce of 20 damage, which I am a huge, huge fan of. We have the likes of Irida and Arvin, so multiple ways to try and like search your deck for um, item cards. So another very good thing to go for this Mouse deck. I generally think this could be a very fun way. I think this could be a way what solves Mouse There are some issues on this one. I think 
Number one is it can be a little bit slower to set up. Another good thing about Meowth Squad is it does help us hit for weakness against likes of a Charizard. So again, something to consider always when you think about it. What is a hit for weakness? And it hits a very, very relevant weakness. Could this be the best way to play um, Meowth Squad with Dustin Noir? Potentially. So I'm really excited to see if anyone will be as brave enough to play at the World Championships. Now let's look at Control. Control with um, Dustin Noir. What does this actually add to this? Now, obviously, with Pidgeot Control, it's a bit different to the likes of a Snorlax. Really having that control on the board, touching deck for anything, and it does obviously have the attacking option with the likes of Blood Moon, Earth, Luna. What I really like about having the, um, Dus um, the Dust Noir is it can stop down some of the opponent. It can force you to get like into like, um, counter catch a game much, much easier, especially as early as turn two. So that's another good thing. What I think is really like this one is you also play that new Genesect, which if it has a tool card attached to this one, no one can play any A spec. So a nice sort of um, tech inclusion as well. What I love about the TM Devo is effectively the way how you can kind of like take some prize cards that way is just constantly utilize your own um, Dust Noir, get loads of um, some damage counters, sort of that, um, spread your damage in that sort of way, and then TM Devo spread in the late game, which I think is a very good inclusion for likes of the Pidgeot and potentially could be a really, really good fun way to play. Now, obviously, you do play the classic sort of um, Pidgeot control, so way of the high counts of the likes of Counter Catcher. Effectively, if you're giving your opponent lots of prize cards, and but also you're denying them a lots of resources as well, you could generally be in a much stronger board state and effectively win in prize trades um, from prize cards, purely with having a bloody as soon as it's a cleaner. You have Mimikyu to help stall them out, and obviously the Dust Cops and Dust Noir to help spread sort of damage counters around for that big TM Devo play in the late game. Or just speed up to try and attack with your bloody as Luna as soon as possible. Generally, something really fun to really think about. Could this be a fun way to play control with the likes of a pit, the um, Dustin Moore? You already are very much heavy in the um, support accounts. Could you opt um, to um, kind of like have a high count of your um, Dust Clops to reduce some of the key cards in your deck? Something to generally consider going into this new format. And let's look at a purely just um, Dust Clops um, deck. Now, what I think is very interesting with this one is you can take multiple prize cards like so Dust Dust Clops and Dust Noir, but then you can also have the likes of that Pokemon Go Slowbro, slow which means that if you have your opponent has um, exactly one prize card left, you can take two prizes. And that only requires a DT or even, because you're always going to be behind, that um, the, the reversal energy. So generally, this is a very fun deck. Now, obviously, you are purely based, based off um, going behind in prize cards because you're always going to be behind that because you're going to be knocking out your own guys. You have Luxro and um, Earth Luna as really good um, clean sweeper attackers. Plus also the Dust Noir and Dust Clops, I really, really enjoy. Plus also even having the... Um, the Jirachi's Iradian is quite a fun sort of inclusion, trying to like knock out your opponent on two coin flips. And if it's KO'd, obviously you get any free cards you might require from your deck. This could be a fun deck to kind of like play at a league. I don't think it's as competitive as most people really would hope it would to be. But generally, nevertheless, it's quite fun to see that people are being very experimental with the Dust Clops and Dust Noir line, really utilizing that knockout effect to really open up certain avenues like, like sort of a, the Reversal Energy, Luxray, as well as also Slowbro, Slowbro and Counter Catcher. Now... Kind of like wrapping up, looking ahead, what is the counter to Dust Cops, Dust Noir? Is itself the only best way to kind of like go around this one? Obviously, we don't have as strong ability lock right now in the format, but it is a pretty interesting way to kind of like play the style deck. Now, can it make any deck good again? We've seen the likes of Meowskarada. Heck, even Palkia has returned. I know Palkia has seen a lot more success in just as a um, 1 1 or 2 2 line in the likes of Shin Pao, but it could make Palkia a much more stronger archetype. Its own deck, we've just seen with Lost Box, could effectively be a, a strong contender as well, really speeding up to get to the likes of the um, Sableye numbers or even the likes of Meowskarada to make it a big, big threat by KOing the likes of um, Bibrols as well as also Charizards very easily. One thing is, will it win Worlds? I generally think this will be in a top eight deck at Worlds. Could it be the in the Charizard list, which is going to win? Potentially. I don't know if, pe pe if people will be playing them Charizard. As, no, I'm, obviously, people will be playing this one. But will it make the finals if it's going to be that um, targeted on the back? But I generally think it adds so much stuff. It's what I love about this one. It's just a um a one 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 line of Dustin One Got Revealed. But there are so many avenues about how, how it's making this, this so many decks much better. And that's one thing I'm really excited about this one and really excited for Shadow Fable. It's a mini set that has a lot of potential. 
So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, please make sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below. What deck will you are you excited to try Dust Noir in? Personally, obviously, I'm a huge fan of the Charizard Dust Noir, but I generally could think it could work in the likes of a Mouse deck. Seems a lot of fun. I'll be back in a few days' time with my mastering video, which I'm really, really excited, and I hope you guys enjoy it. I will see you guys later. Bye for now.